Hello to everyone who's joining us. We're just waiting. We still have a couple of minutes. Just waiting for people to, to come online. If people if people are able to turn their microphones off, that helps to cut down the, the background noise. Okay, so it's it's six thirty. So I'm going to make a start. So hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's public engagement event. I'm Zoe. I'm chair of Healthwatch Bucks. Um, Healthwatch Bucks is part of a network of 150 local independent health watch across the country, and we're here to make to make sure that um, people's experiences are at the heart of decision making when it comes to health and social care. So we're really pleased to be, I'm really pleased to be chairing tonight's event on behalf of the Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire West Integrated Care Partnership. It's a bit of a mouthful, but Bob ICP, for those of us who like shorthand or jargon, depending on your view, and they are seeking feedback on their strategy tonight. The meeting is being recorded and will be posted subsequently on the Your Voice um, network. And your, the vo your voice website, a link of which will appear in the chat shortly, and we'll be referring to that throughout throughout um, tonight's meeting. So this is the first of three engagement events taking place this week, um, and events in Oxfordshire and Berkshire West West are scheduled for later on in the week. And I'm joined by a panel um, who I'm now going to go and introduce, ask to, for them to introduce themselves. Rob. Rob Bowen, can we start with you? Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Rob Bowen. Um, as Zoe's just said, um, I lead our strategy development work uh, for the Integrated Care Board, which is the organisation that oversees uh, all of the NHS organisations across this geographical area. Thank you. I went for you first because I can see you on my screen, but I can now see Angela. So if I, Angela, are you OK to introduce yourself, please? Hello, yes, good evening everybody. Uh, my name's Angela McPherson. I'm an, an elected councillor at Buckinghamshire Council. I'm the deputy leader of the council. I um, have a portfolio responsibility for health and wellbeing and I chair the health and wellbeing board in Bucks, amongst many other things. And it's very nice to see you all here this evening. Thank you. Philippa? Hi everyone, I'm Philippa Baker. I work for Bob ICB and I'm their Buckinghamshire Place Based Director. It's good to see everyone. Thank you. And Rob, the other Rob. Hi, I'm Rob Beasley. I'm the Interim Director of Communication and Engagement at the Integrated Care Board. Thank you. And as you can see, we're also joined um, tonight by a British Sign Language Interpreter. So um, the format of the event tonight, so we'll shortly hear um, a presentation from Rob Bowen on the integrated care strategy. This should last about 10 minutes, after which the panel will take questions. And they really emphasised um, before beforehand how much they want this to be a conversation really with you. They want to hear your thoughts on, on the priorities and, and, and feedback, genuine feedback so that they can um, shape the strategy according to what you are saying as well. Um, following the event, a frequently asked question set will be developed and posted on the ICB engagement website. Um, and as I said, we'll be posting that link in the chat in the chat shortly. But before we go into the presentation, can we just bring the housekeeping points up, please?
I can't see them. So <laughs> they they have come they up. They are there. They have come up. Okay. So for some reason I can't see them, but I will find my printed out copy, which I did as backup, luckily. So obviously the meeting is virtual and um anyone um has it was open to anyone to attend tonight. So we have um participants not just from Bucks but from all over Bob. Um, please can you mute, mute your microphone um, and raise your virtual hand should you like to ask a question in the Q&A session. We'll also be keeping an eye on the chat if you prefer to ask your question that way. After the meeting, as I said earlier, we'll publish a recording of the meeting on the engagement portal, uh, on the engagement portal and we'll pick up any unanswered questions in the Q&As. If you haven't already, we'd also like you to complete the online survey um, again on the engagement portal. So a, a big plug for that tonight um, and I'll, I'll bring your attention to that again before the close of the meeting. But if we could now lead with Rob's presentation. Rob, are you OK to pick up? Yes. Thank you. So good evening again, everybody. What I'm going to do now is to relatively quickly uh, talk through the outline of the uh, proposed integrated care strategy for this geographical area. So as you can see on the slide here, this geographical area is made up of Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire, and then three of the local authority areas in Berkshire, which are collectively known as Berkshire West. Um, there's all sorts of jargon that's uh, associated with this, and I want to do as much as I can to introduce three terms that are similar but different. Um, the, the first is a term around the integrated care system. Um, and that is the group of organisations that come together who've got a part to play in either planning or delivering health uh, and care to all of our population. So it can be a really wide definition. It can be hospitals, general practices, uh, children's services, housing, housing associations, um, mental health providers, schools, lots of organisations that are involved in keeping us healthy, keeping us well. Um, and, and that is the integrated care system. Trying to provide some direction for that integrated care system is a statutory committee that come together that is called the Integrated Care Partnership. Um, I want to emphasize the integrated care partnership because it's this organization or this committee that is uh, that has been developing this strategy um, and it is trying to set a clear set of uh, priorities uh, that will be the direction for the whole of the uh, those organizations that are involved in health and care delivery uh, across Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire West. I've included the integrated care board there. That is one of the partner organisations, but sometimes it can be a bit confusing having uh, another integrated care something as part of it. The integrated care board is, is just the NHS element of, of this bit. As we look at the strategy itself, so on the next slide, as I said, the, the purpose of the strategy is to set a really clear direction for the whole of the system. The idea is that uh, the strategy is itself setting a clear direction, um, is setting that direction, but is also trying to promote uh, partnership working, more joined up working to meet the uh, to meet the health and care needs of our population. Very importantly, the way that this strategy has been pulled together, it has built on existing uh, long term plans, existing strategies that already exist within our different partner organisations. And that's pulled out the importance of trying to addre address where we know that there are there is variation between uh, the experiences that people have of either accessing 
or using the different services and support that might be available to them. So tackling those inequalities is, is really important. But also the strategy uh, is trying to provide a framework where we can share learning and tackle some of those big problems uh, that we know exist across uh, all of our different health and care systems across the country. And this is something that the Integrated Care Partnership is responsible for developing. Uh, next slide, please. So across Bob, uh, so Buck Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire West, there are nearly two million people. Uh, there are, we're expecting that population to grow by about 5% over the next 20 years. Uh, but that 5% uh, growth is not something that's even. We're expecting much more of that growth to be with our population that are getting older. Um, uh, and so we need to face up to some of the challenges that we've got. As we've been developing the strategy, we've tried to set a vision that is relevant for everybody that lives uh, in the Bob area. And it's for those people to have the best possible start in life, to live happier and healthy lives for longer, and to be able to access the right support when we need it. For those of you that have read some of the existing health and wellbeing strategies, you might recognize some of the language there is very similar to the language that's been developed in some of the existing health and wellbeing strategies uh, for the different local authority areas. Next slide, please. Through the strategy, we agreed that there would be five principles. So those five principles are things that we expect to see flowing all through the different themes that we have in the document. Um, the first of those is about trying to keep people well. Um, so trying to help people uh, make uh, the best decisions they can to keep themselves healthy. The second is to tackle inequalities in access, in experience, in the outcomes that people receive, so that we are doing everything we can to make our health and care systems fairer. The third is trying to think about how we can uh, be more personalised in how we approach the planning and delivery of care. And then the last two principles uh, are about where we will be delivering care. And here we've got to balance uh, the importance of trying to do as much as we can locally for people uh, to local to where they live, learn and work. Uh, but also recognising that there will be value of doing things across a, uh, a bigger area and taking advantage of the scale that we've got across the whole of the BOB system. Next slide, please. We've lost the slides. Uh, sorry, guys, I think somebody took the presentation. Uh, just give me a second. While we're getting the slides back up, let me just introduce we we had five thematic areas. Those five thematic areas are really important building blocks for everything that I'm going to say. Um, and those are uh, about protecting and promoting good health. Then we look at the three different life stages um, that people experience. So thinking about starting life well, about living as fuller and healthier life as we can, and then about the support we provide to people as they age well. And then lastly, it's thinking about some priorities that we have about accessing the support and care when we need it. So the first theme that we now have on screen um, recognises the importance uh, of some of the decisions that we make about how we choose to live um, and recognising that uh, many people um, have poor health and a number of those uh, conditions that people have are things that could be prevented or delayed. 
there are four main behaviours that are related to ill health, which are smoking, physical inactivity, an unhealthy diet and alcohol misuse. And those things account for about 40% of the years that people live in ill health. And so we have agreed as we've developed this strategy that we really want to do everything that we can to support people uh, to make the best uh, decisions they can about how they live, particularly relating to those things. Uh, so we've got a priority here around trying to reduce the number of people smoking, to reduce the number of people that are drinking alcohol at levels that are harmful, and reducing the proportion of people that are overweight or obese. However, we recognise that uh, the choices that people make are shaped by the environments and the circumstances in which we live. And so it's really important that we take action to address some of the, uh, the other factors that influence our health. Um, so that's looking at some of the places that we live um, uh, and, and trying to make sure that we are doing all that we can to improve, uh, improve the environments and places that we live in. The last priority in terms of promoting and protecting health um, is about trying to prevent the spread of disease. Um, and the priority there that we've identified is about um, doing all that we can to support uh, programs around uh, immunizations and vaccinations uh, to deliver both the national and local priorities. I'm talking very slowly and taking a long time, so I'm going to speed up as I go through this. Um, so could I go to the next slide, please? Um, so the next slide is about starting well. Uh, the early years in a person's life are crucial to their, uh, their health and well-being in their future. Uh, the early years set a foundation that is really important. And so again, we've identified a number of priorities that will support a really strong foundation. And the aim that we've set that covers this is for all children to achieve the best possible start in life. And we've looked at four priorities here to do what we can to support early years outcomes. Um, and that is looking at uh, a number of measures around maternal health and well-being but also trying to think about uh, how we're supporting good development for children uh, for years naught to five. Then recognising some particular challenges that we've got around service provision. Uh, we have identified a priority around uh, children that suffer from mental ill health and doing what we can to promote uh, better mental health and wellbeing for all of our children uh, and providing more holistic support for them in the different places where they live and learn. The third is specifically recognising uh, the challenges that children with special educational needs and disabilities have um, and thinking about how we can work across the system to improve some of the support that is available for those children, their families and their carers. Lastly, we recognise that uh, it is challenging for children uh, and young people as they move from services that are designed very much around uh, the children's experience uh, of health and care services, uh, that sometimes it's challenging to move into services that are much more focused about uh, for adults. And so there are some measures that we've identified here that will uh, specifically try to support that transition. The next thematic area is uh, around trying to uh, support people to live well. And this is trying to support people to live well for as long as possible. There are many long term conditions uh, that people have, uh, and many of those are preventable. Um, uh, we've we've identified cardiovascular. Could we move on to the next slide? Sorry. We've we've identified cardiovascular disease as uh, one of our priority areas because it is one of the most common causes of death uh, or early death 
um, in the Bob area, and it's a really major contributor to the gap in life expectancy that we have uh, across different populations within our uh, within our area. So this priority pulls out uh, the need for us to do more about earlier identification, uh, providing more targeted health checks to those uh, that are most at risk, to tackle smoking, um, to provide more support to specific ethnic communities who we know are at higher risk of developing cardiovascular disease and supporting uh, more physical activity um, in some of our populations. We've identified mental health as a priority. Uh, and again, this is trying to improve access um, for some of those services where we know that uh, there are populations or communities who are at high risk of developing uh, poor mental health. Um, and the last priority, again, is recognising the challenge that we have uh, around uh, cancer. Um, so we know that within our populations, and this is something that's seen nationally, uh, that there are some populations, some groups uh, of uh, people who don't access some of our cancer screening services uh, in in as good a way as we would like them to. And so the priority that we've got here is a number of actions that we want to take that will improve the proportion of people and some of our specific populations, uh, how they access cancer screening and how we will improve our diagnosis rates of cancer. The next priority, so moving on again, is about supporting people as they uh, get older. Um, our overall aim here is to support people to live healthier and independent lives for longer. In Bob, approximately 25% of the people uh, of our population are over 60. We know that this number is increasing uh, and we know that as people get older, they're more likely to develop um, conditions that are challenging for their health. Um, and we want to do more to help people manage those conditions longer at home um, and then provide the right support for people when they need it. And that's what the priorities are that we see here. So the first is about trying to keep people independent and healthy and connected within their communities for as long as possible. So that's embracing technology, some of the special roles that we have within our organisations that will help people uh, access care and support in the right place, um, but also recognising that we would need to do more to come around the individuals and support them when they need that health and care and doing that in as joined up a way as possible. And the final priority here is about recognising the really valuable role that our carers do um, and providing the best support we can for carers. The final theme is around uh, accessing some of our quality services. Um, we know that access is a challenge. We read that in our papers, we see that on the news. Um, and this priority recognises that we want to do more to support people to access these services at the right place and at the right time. And the priorities here recognise that we need to provide support for people in their communities, and we will do that through more integrated teams of individuals uh, that will support people to access the right care in the right place. So that's improving the way that we make assessments for people, the way that we'll try and direct people uh, and help people understand where they can get support without always going to the GP or without always going to A&E. The second is about trying to uh, do more across all of our different organisation types to try and reduce and eliminate long waits for some of our services. And we've got programmes of work that will do that. And the final priority is about um, supporting people to uh, access urgent care services when they need to. Um, and part of that is about trying to help people do more to manage their need in their own homes. Again, supporting people to uh, 
point people in the right direction to where the most appropriate support for their need will be. Uh, but also to make sure that we are providing support to pa patients in hospital when they need that support in hospital. And then we're working across our system uh, to support people when they leave hospital and fit enough to leave hospital. So that's a run through all of our priorities. I've talked for longer than I planned to. Um, I'm going to stop there and we can come back to the next steps, I think, uh, towards the end of the conversation, Zoe, if that's OK. That's fine. He did promise me 10 minutes, so that's I'm seems really fair. sorry. <laughs> OK, um, so now um, people's questions. Um, I have one already I can see in the chat, um, but if people want to put their virtual hands up as well, um, I will ask um, Erica and Sue, I think, to help me out spotting who, who has their hands up. Um, but so first question and Sorry, my Teams is being really slow today. So this is for you, Rob. Um, so Rob describes the ICS as involving various significant organisations. Does he agree with the King's Fund, who referred to the BCSE organisations and other local partners? To meet these objectives, ICSs need to reach beyond the NHS to bring together local authority, BCSE organisations and other local partners. And how important does he see local community organisations such as GP patient groups in helping to shape and deliver an ICP strategy? Absolutely. The, through the development of the strategy, we have involved a number of different organisations. We've tried to be really broad in the types of organization that we have involved in the development of the priorities. Uh, we've had quite strong links from uh, the VCSE sector through the VCSE Alliance group um, that has been coordinating some of the expertise that we've needed through this and we absolutely see uh, the importance of the VCSE sector in helping with uh, some of the challenges that we have in terms of delivery. Um, uh, but but perhaps it would be interesting to understand from colleagues uh, how they see that we could uh, make that. If, if there's something that we need to communicate differently in the way that we've written the strategy, um, I'm, I'm really interested in hearing uh, some views about what we've got right in the strategy and things that we could uh, potentially uh, be clearer on. Thank you, Rob. I can see Angela has her hand up. Angela, did you want to come in here? Yeah, if, if that's OK, um, I'm really interested to hear what people have got to say. Um, and I know people on this call, I know a lot of them, uh, you are very articulate about this. I think there's a few things to say about inclusivity and the importance of it. Uh, in the ICP and of course that's at Bob level and to have a board that is manageable and delivers stuff has got to um, by its very nature be um, representative but it cannot <laughs> include hundreds of people. I think it's worth remembering that subsidiarity is key as one of the priorities of the ICS. So to devolve down to local level to enable that priorities are delivered um, in localities is absolutely key. And I can see lots of things in the chat bar cropping up here about the importance of palliative care, the importance of children um, starting well, all of that sort, sort of stuff, which absolutely is right. And I just want to reassure people on the call, there are many plans already in place, partnership plans at local mm. level. Um, and I chair the Health and Wellbeing Board, so I'm aware of this, that will deliver uh, some of these um, uh, umbrella ambitions, if you want, for a be better word, that the ICP has. But absolutely, and, and Rob is right, inclusivity is key. We possibly haven't even got there yet. There are probably groups we've even missed out on. But I would say when the ICP um, meets and determines and distills down its 18 priorities, as it will have to do to a certain extent, because 18 is a lot, um, at that point of the distilling down, 
the appropriate voluntary sector charitable organizations um you know professional organizations would absolutely have to come to the table to deliver those partnership plans i hope that makes sense but that's my current view on it and of course we're only at the beginning of this journey so there's a lot to do thank you um i'm going to move on to people who've got their hands up for a couple of questions but i can <laughs> see that the person who asked the question in the chat has their hand up um did you want to come back on that at all do you want to follow up on that your original question uh, well, thank you very much, sir. It's Mike Eckkind from the Patients Group in uh, John Hamden Surgery. Uh, I was actually, uh, you know, uh, coming back on that briefly, uh, it was disappointing that you didn't therefore send a copy of the uh, alert to the consultation on the strategy direct to the PPGs in each of the surgeries for whom uh, you do have contact details. But moving on, uh, the strategy has as you, as you say 18 priorities and in fact 86 areas of focus uh i don't know don't understand from the strategy what will be achieved what is achievable what where the risks are and what basically will look different what's the impact of the strategy it's it strikes me as just lovely words uh without um anything uh, sort of meaningful. I mean, for example, there are seven splendid sounding areas of focus for ma adult mental health. Uh, and we'll all vote for better community based support for adults, mental health treatment that's tailored to individual needs, better access to mental health services for people living in more deprived areas and so on. But Mike, Mike, OK, that's thank you. I'm just uh, you, you've asked another another layer in there. So if I let if I let them respond to that, then I'm going to move on to someone else, if that's OK. Thank you. So, so Mike, thank you for the question. You're you're absolutely right. Prioritisation is always going to be a challenge when we think about the health and care needs of our population. Um, part of what this exercise is for is to help us understand more about what different organisations and people uh, think about the priorities that we've got so that we are being responsive to um, what what different people's perspectives are. So that that's the point of some of this engagement. Um, and then we will need to work together as a partnership to try and distill down um, what this will look like in terms of a delivery plan over the next five years. But that that is work that's still to be done. Um, so we we are we're we're doing that at the moment um uh but at the, this this process is very much about trying to understand what different people's perspectives are as part of that input to the prioritization okay and philippa did you want to come in there yeah i'll come in briefly because i can see other hands up and uh very keen to hear from everybody but um i think as part of that work um to sort of hone in on particular areas i think the role of the three different places um within um bob icb will be really really important um so each place will want to focus on those areas where through working in partnership they can really accelerate progress um in relation to issues that are really important to their residents so um that's obviously work that hasn't started yet we're still consulting on the strategy but one of the things i'm hoping we'll hear about on this call is what sort of areas um, you think we should be um, focusing in, focusing in on and we're hearing about some of that in the chat which is is really helpful so um, I do think you're right there's a lot of priorities um, and each place um, within the system may take a slightly different approach to prioritizing year on year um, depending on the their own local circumstances okay thank you can we go to Mike Hobbs now please uh, yes, thank you. Mike Hobbs, I'm a governor with the Oxford Health Trust. I'm actually an Oxfordshire governor, but uh, as you know, we provide the full range of mental health services across Buckinghamshire too. Um, I was going to ask about prioritisation, uh, but that's already been addressed significantly. Can I piggyback on Cara's question in the chat column and, and point us specifically to think about services for children? Um, 
uh, you know, there can be surely no more important place uh, at which to start than the needs, um, health needs, physical, uh, mental and well-being needs of children. Um, and I'd be interested to know, given the state of children's services, particularly children's mental health services, not just in our area, but in many parts of the country, how the ICP would see this as a priority, how it will involve children and young people, as Cara is raising, um, in deciding how to move forward with this priority. And I would just put in the the, the brief statement there that Oxford Health has established a youth forum um, within Buckinghamshire, as it has in Oxfordshire, and that this could be a valuable contributor. Uh, young people are engaged and very much wanting to express their views. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Really valuable question. Um, I, in, in in terms of how we work with uh, children in the development of this strategy, uh, and and particularly developing subsequent levels of detail about exactly what this will mean, how we'll do it. Um, I would be really, really keen to find a way that we can do that as collaboratively as possible with with the relevant groups of people. So if if we have a a forum that we could use that's an appropriate forum, that would be absolutely brilliant. Um, so if if it's if you're happy to, if you could drop your email into the chat. I'm very happy to follow up with you directly on that. Um, uh, I've forgotten the first part of your question though, Mike, I'm sorry. Shall I read out um, Cara's question as well? Yes. Um, uh, so I would be interested to understand the scale of the ICS's ambition to involve children, young people and families, both pre and postnatally as well, in designing how the Start Well priorities will be realised. Uh, yeah, so I th I've sort of partially answered that. I, I th there, there is, of course, more to do to develop uh, the detail of exactly how these things will be, these priorities will be delivered. Um, and as we go forward, trying to develop each of those delivery plans in detail uh, and those changes or, or, or developments to any services, we absolutely would be keen to hear from uh, the relevant people that are the service users, uh, those people who've got um, lived experiences, we absolutely would want to work with them. And I think that would be a commitment uh, that we have across the whole of the partnership. Thank you. Philippa, did you want to come in? Mm, I just wanted to sort of follow that up by illustrating a point that Angela made earlier as well, that, you know, we're not we're not starting from scratch in all of these areas. And um, particularly, for example, in relation to um, children with special educational needs and disabilities, um, SEND um, uh, needs, uh, we I'm already on a number of um, boards in Buckinghamshire uh, that involve, for example, parent representatives on uh, in the governance structures so that we're always hearing from those um, with direct contact of involving children, young people and families directly. Um, I don't personally have a lot of expertise in that, but I'm sure there are people in the council and elsewhere who know really well how to do that. And I think it's a really fantastic way to make sure that when we're looking at transforming services, we are being as creative um, as we can and actually investing our um, precious resources really in the things that people actually want. Um, so uh, I think that's really, really important um, and uh, something that we we'll want to build on and really keen to hear more from you about um, how we could get better at that, I think. Um, I think also um, with services for children, it's a really interesting area um, for, for two other reasons. One is that if you get, um, you know, uh, public health right with young people, then it really sets them up well for the future. And that's one of the ways that you can turn the dial um, on some of the outcomes that we want to see in terms of improved health outcomes. So it is really important. Um, and I also think that um, children's services mm -hmm. are one of those areas that really benefit from partnership approaches because um, children come into contact with so many different aspects of um, you know, health, health visiting, education, um, local authority services, NHS services, 
services, primary care, all of those different services are engaged. And if we're really going to need going to serve them well, we have to work really well in partnership. Um, so I think it is a really important area and one that we are, are very, very committed to, to prioritising as part of this strategy. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to go to another another comment in the chat um, before I um, go to a hand. So the, the objectives and themes described are very important, but I notice there is no discussion of dying well or palliative care. With an ageing population, this must be an increasingly important area. Does someone want to comment on that from the panel? So I'm very happy to start. Uh, the purpose of this exercise is to hear different people's perspectives. Uh, this has been some feedback that we have received from other places as well. It's really helpful to have people's perspectives coming in. Um, uh, as we've been talking through the different priorities, we recognise that there are already services and things that are, um, as as both Angela and Philippa have said, uh, that that are making these priorities in in the places in which we work uh, more locally than the whole of the system. Um, we we know that uh, palliative and end of life care is something that's important. We know that there are priorities that are uh, uh, that this is a priority in different places, but it's really helpful to get the feedback as to whether or not this is something that we need to include in this as a strategy. OK, thank you. So can we go to Mark Ormerod now, please, for a question? Hey, thanks, Zoe. Um, I'm wearing two hats this evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I chair the VCSE Partnership Board for Buckinghamshire. So VCSE, for those colleagues that don't know, voluntary community and social enterprise sector. And I think it was just referring back to a comment that um, Angela made earlier that uh, the VCSE is certainly part and integral to the future plans. Uh, of the ICP, uh, but I think it's incumbent on us as a voluntary sector as well to, uh, to 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 be sort of cohesive with the plans as they come out. I think it's too difficult and too complicated at the time that the NHS is already stretched. So I think we've got to be responsible for some of, sort of the planning on our side as well, which we're trying to do um, through through the work of the Partnership Board and others. So I think that's uh, that's helping you through the Bob v VCSE Alliance. It's it's coming about. So I think that's something that's in motion. My day job, I'm Chief Executive LEAP. LEAP is one of the 43 active partnerships that works across the country trying to get people physically active. And I think if it was anything like a, a soft lobby or a plea this evening, uh, and you might get the same from my uh, my colleagues in, in Berkshire and, and Oxfordshire in the next couple of sessions as well. Um, but it, it doesn't, oops, sorry, my phone, it doesn't come across um, that physical activity is there. And after we've come through a pandemic where Chris Whitty every day stands up and describes it as the, the miracle cure uh, and the one thing that we could do, um, we just need to think about it. And I was jotting down through each of the themes that it does sort of impact on, on all of them um, and start well the points that Mike and Philip has made, just that essential physical literacy that children need to develop that habit for life that keeps them active and they stay active and they age actively, uh, that helps the, the health economics um, of the situation. Uh, the living well, that um, cardiovascular disease, so important earlier and identification, uh, and how do we help prevent that from happening? Physical activity plays a part there. Aging well, physical activity for older adults, and all the work we did through COVID with the public health team, 10,000 activity packs going into old folks' homes. And then theme five, access to services. I think the links that um, uh, fall to us around social prescribing, really important. The active medicine programme that we've run across, Bob, and I'm going to shut up after this point, uh, and that's just um, assisting frontline workers to talk about the benefits of physical activity. That's up to 2,000 people that we've um, now trained, and that's free training. And then some project work that we're doing, training up fitness instructors um, with prehab and rehab in terms of cancer care. Um, so I, th I think, you know, if, if it doesn't come across as a as a plea um, that physical activity should uh, be a bit more prevalent uh, in the strategy, if that's possible, please. Very Thank helpful. you, Feedback. Mark. Um, and I can um, I can see Angela's. Sorry, did you want to pick that up, Rob? Or Angela, did you want to come in at this point? 
Well, I can, I can come in at this point to save Rob having to answer everything. Um, but I, I think you're absolutely right about, you know, physical activity absolutely has to weave through everything. You know, it, it impinges on so many outcomes that it's, it, it is essential. And of course, the feedback today will mean that we can uh, highlight and emphasise some of these areas that perhaps aren't coming out as well. And I would make a sort of plug uh, for, for what we call the wider determinants of health that perhaps some people may have a view on on this call, such as employment, for example, being an absolute cornerstone of enabling people to uh, be mentally and physically healthy, um, as well as sort of housing provision, many of which are, you know, this isn't all about the NHS folks. It's actually about lots of stuff we could all deliver, local authorities particularly, uh, voluntary sectors, as, as, as we've said already. So it's absolutely we all are going to need to play a part in this. I think the, the, the difficulty, in a way, is being able to distill down our priorities, as I said before, and to show, um, in answer to my et Mike Etkind's uh, comments, that we can deliver outcomes that are going to make a difference to our population. That's the task that we've got ahead of us. So um, it, it was really just to say that what I was going to do, though, Zoe, <laughs> is just be a bit of a devil's advocate and pick up some of the comments that are, people are grumbling about in the chat bar and will continue to grumble about unless we get our engagement right. Because actually, the people on this call Many of you know each other. We know each other. We all can talk sort of public health talk and stuff like that. But, you know, where are the members of the public? So we need to really uh, start sharpening up our engagement. And, you know, if people have got thoughts and suggestions on that, bring them on because it's a difficult task. But I can see there's grumbles there and I think we need to acknowledge them. That's all. Thanks, Zoe. So, so agree. It's not like you to be a devil's advocate, Angela. <laughs> um, so I can see um, I can see several. Um, so Mike's comment about PPGs and involving PPGs, um, making sure that they're involved and involved early is has come out in the chat. Um, so that's uh, I'm sure the panelists have picked that up, too. Um, Philippa, did you want to come in now? Um, yeah, just briefly, I just wanted to reflect on on Mark's point, and also um, I think Cara in the chat um, talking about how Bernardo's can help with the the youth forum, etc. I think it's a really good illustration of how we can set out our strategy, and then by engaging and talking to others, particularly in the VCSE sector, you can then have um, new and different perspectives or energised ideas on how we can deliver um, uh, that you know take us in a, a more transformative direction. So um, for me, it's always really, really helpful to, to hear those different perspectives and get that um, supportive challenge on, on, on other options and other lenses through which we can look at these, these challenges, which, you know, as Mike has said, um, you know, we've, we've been thinking about these sorts of things for a long time, but we need to um, keep trying new things um, in our attempts to address them. Thank you. And if we could go to Ian Millington now, while I get to grips with the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I feel a bit like Alice that has fallen down the rabbit hole and I seem to be in a slightly different world. Um, I don't have the knowledge that this group had. I was actually sent a link by the National Pensioners Convention and I think you might hear a lot of different priorities uh, or concerns, I won't say priorities, all the things that you've listed are very important. I, I, I take nothing away from that, they are. But uh, there are things which, for example, I would want to ask, and I'm sure my colleagues would want to ask, is there extra money for us? Uh, are we looking at good practice elsewhere? The it's been mentioned about talking to other groups. I would recommend that you do talk to National Pensioners Convention. Um, if, if you don't, I'm sure you've got contacts with them. I hope that you have. If you haven't, please let me know. Um, our concern certainly is complete lack of GPs, not complete, a lack of GPs, a lack of nurses, 
and a lack of carers. And it's been exasperated by the present crisis that we've had with COVID. But it was occurring before COVID. Let's not make that mistake that blame everything on COVID. It was occurring before that. Now, I've not heard those basics spoken about this evening. Uh, I don't take anything away from the things that you have mentioned, but please, uh, digital in in inclusion would be a nice thing as well. Uh, I won't go into personal details of how horrendous it's been to actually try and get uh, contact with the appropriate uh, uh, GPs, nurses, etc. I'll stop there. I could go on, as you can tell, but I will stop. Thank you. Thank you. Um, who who would like to come back on that? OK, uh, I think Philip has got her hand up. I can make a start. I'm sure Rob's got um, uh, comments as well. I mean, I just think those are really insightful comments and what you've described, talking about workforce and digital and data and finance, those are what we often describe as the enablers of change. So you need all of those things to be in place to help deliver on all of these priorities. So I think they are really important points to make. Um, and important points for us to reflect on as we deliver um, this strategy. Um, so one of the things that Integrated Care Partnership is really looking to do is um, uh, think about how it can add value by working as a partnership at system level together and getting some of those economies of scale. And that might be about workforce drives, for example, that we could do um, at a bigger level. It might be about looking at join up across different career paths. It might be about looking um, at how we can try and recruit people like social workers at scale. It will certainly be about um, looking at financing of some of this, and it will certainly um, cover some of the digital data projects and how we use data to um, understand the health outcomes of our populations, etc. So I think they're all really, really good points. Um, and thank you for for flag flagging um, a, a different stakeholder group. I don't know, maybe Rob or one of the two Robs um, will know if we've already engaged. Um, is it the Pensioners Association? Is that the right um, name? Sorry, I've National, Pen National Pensioners Pen Convention. Thank Pen you. Um, yeah, so it may be that we've already contacted them, but that's that's really helpful um, to, to flag that group um, because you're right, they'll have lots of really, really helpful perspectives. And just on that, can I put Rob Beasley on the spot here? So, Rob, do we have do we have links with with that group? And um, Mike Hobbs has also made a comment about public engagement and involvement in using existing bodies. That I don't know if you could talk through what what you're kind of currently doing and plan to do in relation to engagement and involvement. Sure. Um, I don't know the specifics uh, about our involvement with some of the national organisations um, that pr probably sits with people that are planning and organising services for those particular groups. Um, I was just typing a reply that I was going to put in the chat. Um, so I think I think we. Well, we. We know we know that the engagement around this draft strategy um, isn't uh, how isn't uh, as good as we would, we would like it to have been. Really, um, the timescales in particular have been much shorter than we would have liked, um, and we haven't yet got all of the engagement me uh, mechanisms that exist across the ICP partners sort of fully aligned. So we've not been able to sort of roll things out and know that things have been would be cascaded on uh, at the right time. So. With a longer times, with a longer time frame, that wouldn't that wouldn't have mattered so much. Um, but we have shared the information uh, about the draft partnership strategy and the engagement with uh, trusts, NHS trusts, local authorities, um, members of the VCSE Alliance, Health Health Watch organisations. We've done local press advertising, um, and we know that the organisations have cascaded information onto their own audiences, such as NHS trust members, um, um, residents, users of their services and so on. And that's how some people on this call have um, have learned about it. Uh, and um, one of my colleagues has also just said we've shared it with housing associations. So it's been a fairly widespread, um, but um, 
but I think the main problems have been the timescales. We've we've been trying to do this in a very condensed period, and usually for this kind of thing, we would we would, we would have more time. Sorry, I'm eating. Speak now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Is it not going to? Yes. Okay. My Teams is is actually muting me. Is that fed up with my voice? <laughs> Never a good um, time. <laughs> so I we we're coming. You know, we have five minutes left. There is a question about dementia that I don't know, Angela, if you wanted to um, pick up because I can see you've commented on it in the chat um, before um, before we kind of wrap up really and go to to panelists again. I. I think we should probably take that away um, because okay. Bucks is certainly kicking off quite a lot of work around dementia. And mm. I know um, that Councillor Carol Heap, um, who is involved with the Marlow group, um, is linked into what we're doing. And so are some of the people from that group. So th there is work to be done. Quite how the ICP uh, might do that on a bob footprint. I don't know yet. I mean, it's still early days. So um, all I can say is reiterate is what I said at the beginning is that a lot of work is going on at what we call place level, which is Buckinghamshire level. And I think for me, that is going to be the focus of our de our delivery plans um, that come down from the ICP. OK, and hopefully a nice, easy question to finish off on. Where, where are you? That Someone is asking, Mike, can I ask Angela where that nice looking view behind her is? Yes, you can, because it's easy. <laughs> um, it's it's just outside my back door. I live near Stowe, um, not Stowe on the Wold, Stowe um, in Buckinghamshire and a little village called Dadford. And there's some allotments and a little stream outside our back door. And that's where it is. And it's absolutely beautiful. We're very okay. blessed. We get lots of <laughs> owls and birds and egrets and things I could go on and bore you. But that's all good for health. It by is. The way. And well-being. Good. Yes. Um, so just to, to reassure people who put things in the chat that haven't been picked up, um, as I said earlier at the start, um, uh, the uh, the ICB the, <laughs> are compiling um, a FAQ that will go um, on the engagement platform um, for people to pick up um, to, to read afterwards. Um, can we just finish? Um, does anyone on the panel want to say anything to close? Closing comments. So firstly, can I say thank you? And secondly, I think just refer to the next steps that we um, had. So the engagement period ends this coming Sunday. So if you'd like to formally contribute uh, your views, as in we've recorded what's being said here, but if you want to record any other views, then please do that through the engagement uh, process before Sunday. Uh, we're then aiming to pull together a report that will summarise themes that have come out through the engagement process. Um, and then there will be an opportunity uh, for for us to uh, try to reflect um, and consider which of the feedback uh, were, can be reflected within the strategy. Potentially, how can other bits of feedback be picked up by other partners or other bits of the system? Um, so all, all the feedback that you've given us has been really helpful in helping shape either the strategy or other things that we're thinking about. Um, and we will aim to produce a final version of this strategy, which takes account of feedback that we've received um, in March. Uh, that will be something that's signed off by the Integrated Care Partnership. So it's uh, signed off by all of those organisations. Um, and in terms of delivery and planning, absolutely, that's something that we will be uh, doing on an ongoing basis. And as we've discussed, we'll try and do that as collaboratively as we can with different partner organisations and different uh, different uh, ways of trying to include 
members of the public and, and expert voices within that. So thank you all very, very much for your time this evening. It's been really great to hear your views. Um, really appreciate you giving us the time. OK, and to echo, echo thanks to everyone who has come along today and also to our panellists as well who've, who've answered questions. Um, the link to the um, survey has appeared frequently in the chat, so please, please do complete that if you haven't already. And um, as, as Angela says, spread the word so we can get as many voices as possible feeding back. Thank you. Thank thanks you very everybody. much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Thank everybody. you. Thank you. Bye bye.